forward to cooking that cray. Hmm, everyone's kind of saying it would be ridiculous to dive tomorrow. Hmm. He's actually turned up, I don't believe it. He's actually here. <laughs> He's actually here. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah. It's only a bit of rain. And it's only a bit of rain. <laughs> Storm. What's yeah. going on, dude? Mate, it's brilliant. Really good. I'm very pleased to be getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to be out. <laughs> Sounds like a herd of mountain goats. Hope Rosie's ready for this. Oh, we're here now. <laughs> we're here now. <laughs> oh, mate. It's yeah, it's gonna be worth it. We're, you know, not going crazy offshore or anything today. We're just gonna stick in a sheltered bay where the wind is coming offshore. You know? Not gonna do anything too nuts. As you can see, the camera's being blown out of my hand. We're out on the water, it definitely is windy. There's actually very little swell coming in. It's just a bit choppy, so we're gonna keep an eye on each other, dive down on some reefs here and see what we can find. The water actually looks quite clear. Doesn't look bad at all, to be honest, so. Woo, let's dive. So the reef is just the most tranquil, beautiful place to be compared to the storm raging above. There were a good number of bass and pollock on the reef, but I decided to see if there are any trigger fish around first. It's not long before I glimpsed a trigger here, but it does not hang about. There's never any need to risk a long shot. I know the trigger will hide in a nearby hole. There he was, just with his nose out of the hole. And um, I thought it was a conger eel at first. I was a bit worried I'd shot a conger, but luckily it was a trigger. So, tropical fish for a tropical day. <laughs> I'd seen a couple of lobsters whilst hunting the trigger, so I decided to hunt one of these next. The last thing I was expecting to see was a spiny lobster though, waving its antennae at me. I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. This bug was lightning quick and I had to give it my all to get it out of this crevice. I've only ever seen a couple of crates and usually they're absolutely yeah. tiny. 100%. Man. This is like... That's definitely the biggest I've seen in the UK. Yeah. It's nice not size a bad size. size. Sweet. Let's put it in the boat. Wow. Let's get in the boat and have a look. So this is a spiny lobster, or we actually call them crawfish here in England. And that's the first one of edible size I've seen in eight years of diving. So it was a bit of a scrap. He was really, really um, right down in this little crevice. I was down there with both hands, kicking away for pro probably about 30 seconds trying to pull it out of the hole and eventually 
it came free. I didn't want to pull these antennae off. Absolutely massive. Um, a good half meter long, these antennae. And, uh, and if you can see all that meat on the tail. Very much looking forward to eating these. They're covered in spikes, They're covered in little spikes, the horns. Yeah, and the actual top of its head has two horns on. They're like ra raising. Really spiky. Oh, this, this, this is so spiky. So this is the biggest ever UK spiny lobster I've ever seen. They're usually found below 20 meters, actually below the kelp line. And they like to live on really rough, rocky ground. But this one was only in 10 meters. Absolute beautiful animal. A good eating size, so we're going to get it on the barbecue. First of all, I'll show you how I want to butterfly it so there's no waste at all. Take a kind of quite flexible filleting knife and go in around the top. This um, spiny lobster has been in the freezer for a while. He's gone completely dozy, he's not going to feel this. Then I'm going to put the knife up here. And the idea of this is to actually break the carapace um, away from the leg sockets so that we can barbecue the leg sockets. So that should now lift off. And what we're going to be able to do is clean this out and, and wash it out and then eat the leg sockets. I'm going to wash that out. And then we've just cut down the tail, not all the way through, and opened it up. And that's going to sit down on the barbecue with some garlic butter. Make sure it's opened right out. Now I'm going to put some leather jacket as well. Tropical barbecue. <laughs> Look at that. Hello. We'll close the lid and that's going to help create a steam for that lobster. And some say it's tastier than our usual native homerus gamerus. So if it's tastier than the common lobster, that is one very tasty lobster. We'll find out. That. Just going to add a little bit of um, garlic butter. So the meat is very, very white. It feels very delicate. Certainly, I'm very excited to um, try to find it out. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I think that one's excited. I need you to Press tell me if it's as tasty as normal lobster. Okay. We have a very important to talk to Yeah, I think that's enough for everyone out. Daddy? Thank you. What's the next one? Verdict? It's much lighter than a... Um, I'm not as quite as chewy as a... It's not as chewy, is it? it? Sort of melts in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Lovely with the garlic butter. I'll agree, the taste is the same, really, as lobster, on second thoughts, but the, the texture is a lot smoother and a lot... A lot less Easy chewy. Chew. Yeah. It all sort of melts in your mouth. It really does. Um, and that is a fair test because I've cooked lobster in exactly the same way. Touch fly on the barbecue. So, thank you very much for uh, watching another Joe PK video. I think the overall verdict is the taste very similar to lobster, but the actual texture a little bit more delicate. Tiny bit more, um, less tough, I would say. So, Possibly, I would regard it slightly more highly than lobster. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Where's the lobster? Has Daddy got it? Yeah.